to be surrounded with ungodly people, not just for 30 minutes, but sometime 8 to 12 hours dealing with people that don't mind being messy, folk that's trying to irritate you. You know how some folk will try to push your button to see how saved you are, but I'm telling you, don't get in the flesh. Let God help you with people like that. Psalm 22 and 19. It's a psalm attributed to David. Notice what David said in verse 19. But you, O Lord, do not be far from me. Sound like he needs some help. O my strength, hasten to help me. Oh, God. That word hasten means that David wants God to be quick in helping him. Can I, can I break it down? David is letting God know this is an emergency. I need some urgent help. I need you to move speedily. God, oh man, I'm wondering if there anybody here going through something and you need God to move speedily for you. Another word for speedily is now. I need some help now. And so based upon that, look at a neighbor and tell your neighbor the subject this morning. Lord, help me now. Oh, God, we're making that thing personal. Look at somebody and tell them the subject this morning. Lord, help me now. Be seated. Lord, help me when? We're going to deal with this thing. Help me when? Some of y'all ain't like you ain't never got in no, in no situation where you needed some urgent. Well, Pastor, we can't tell God to hurry up or, or, or speedily do. Look, look at Dave. You better look again. He said, oh, Lord. Oh, my strength. Hasten to help me. The key or one of the biggest keys that we need to understand is that when you need immediate help, don't panic. Don't panic. Don't get to operating in confusion because you don't know what to do. Oh, Lord. And don't sit there and act like everything you go through in life you have the answers by yourself because you don't. You, you would be telling a big lie this morning. The thing to remember again is that when you are in need of help, you don't want to get to operating in confusion because people who begin to operate in confusion will begin to run here and there searching for help but they are, again, not being led by God, but they're being controlled by their feelings or emotions, which, if the truth be told, are not in the place that they need to be. And yes, as a child of God, you can go through things that will send your emotions or your feelings into a place that they do not need to be in. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You can so let a problem get you down to where, yes, it is a problem, but it is not as bad big as you're trying to make it out to be. You, you are allowing a simple problem to dominate you as if it is just something that is just so horrific but that's how people do when they get confused. Oh you know some folk that will when they get to going through something the one thing they're going to do is panic and, and note this this morning when people panic concerning trouble they are going to make terrible or bad decisions. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how long you've been in the church. If you get in trouble and you panic, you are going to make bad decisions. 
Can we take that farther? You are not only going to make some terrible decisions, but as time goes on, you are going to actually regret the decisions that you made. How many have ever moved too quick, made a decision, and later on you regretted what you did? You regretted what you said. You regretted how you handled a problem because you got to operate in confusion and you panicked and you did what you should not not have done. Just, just lift that hand up if you have ever been guilty. Oh, everybody in this church better have your hand up because probably all of us have did it a time or two. Am I right? Am I right about that? The key is, again, don't panic. Don't get to operating in confusion because if you do so, you are going to forget God in the midst of what you're going through. You're going to forget God. And if you forget God in the midst of your trouble, you are making a big mistake. We need to remember God even in our distressing moments. Oh, my Lord. I said you have to learn to remember God even when you are going through something tough that you don't have the answer for. Why do I need to remember God? Because it is God who, according to the scripture, knows everything. Now, I'm going to give some of y'all some credit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to even give you more credit than you probably deserve. And I'm going to say to you that when it comes to many of us, we are highly intelligent. We are some intelligent people. If that be you, look at somebody and tell them, yeah, I consider myself to be an intelligent person. But look at that same person and tell them, say, but there is a limit to my knowledge. See, that's when you don't need to forget God and what you're going through because no matter how smart you may be, you are not all-knowing. You're not on the same level as God. Therefore, I can't forget the one who actually knows everything and then I get to acting like I know everything. Ooh, I get to acting like my spouse know everything. Get to acting like my supervisor know it. The devil is a lie. There is one person who knows everything about everything, and that's God. When I don't have the answer, that's who I need to go to. That's the primary person I need to acknowledge. Listen, and if I acknowledge God and he sends me to you, that's fine. Because I only came to you because when I acknowledged him, he told me to do so. Because he could easily put my answer inside of you. Am I right? Am I right about that? But listen this morning. The key again is not to panic. Don't get to operating in confusion because according to the scripture, God is not the author of of confusion and so if I'm operating in confusion it's telling me biblically that God ain't in the midst of what I'm going through and I need him to be in the midst of trouble that I can't handle are well, y'all hearing me this morning now when it comes to God understand that he will help you with big problems some of, some of us got some big problems I said, some of us dealing with some big problems. God will help you with big stuff. Can I take it further? He'll also help you with small stuff. God will help you with things that are serious. But then he'll turn around and help you with something that's simple. God will help you when a thousand folk have surrounded you and want to take you out. He'll help you. But he'll also show up and help you when it's just two folk trying to do this, that, and the other. He'll still help you. Somebody get in the rainbow right now. I said he'll still help you. God will help you with a church problem. Yeah, he will. He'll help you with things you deal with at the church house. And don't act like you're never going to have to deal with any problems at the church house. Yeah, but God will help us with stuff that happened here at what? The church. But guess what? He'll also help you with things that happen at your home. God will help a person with things that they deal with at home. 
You know what I love about him? He don't just stop at the church. He don't just stop at the house. God will help you on your job. Yeah, he do. God is on your job with you, and he will help you deal with problems that's on your job. Because it's mainly on a lot of our jobs where we have to deal with a whole lot of ungodly people. We have to be surrounded with ungodly people, not just for 30 minutes, but sometimes 8 to 12 hours dealing with people that don't mind being messy, folk that's trying to irritate you. You know how some folk will try to push your button to see how saved you are, but I'm telling you, don't get in the flesh. Let God help you with people like that. Oh, good word this morning. Let God help you with people who are trying to irritate you on purpose. You got to let God help you with folk like that. Tell your neighbor, I know what he's talking about. And tell your neighbor, if I tell the truth this morning, there was a time or two that I didn't let God help me with folk like that. Oh, wait. I remember a time where you, I, I'm going to handle this. I'm going to show them who they dealing with. I'm going to let them know I ain't always been saved. I'm going to let them see another side of me. Wait a minute. There shouldn't be but one side of you. And if you get to operating in that other side, you in sin. Somebody shout, God will help you. Somebody shout, God will help you. Shout it again. God will help you out. I need somebody to shout that to know it to be true. Shout, God will help you. God will help you. 